us pray. Lord, this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being the God of a second chance and another chance. With gratitude, I pray. Amen. I will be discussing today a subject with three words. And the subject today that I will be dealing with is, I don't believe. The meaning of I don't believe is disbelief means accept as truth, rely on, have confidence in. When I look over my life and remember all the things I've been through and how God brought me out. God brought me out not even smelling like I've been in the fiery furnace. He brought me out still clothed in my right mind. Then, church, as I begin to see what I'm facing right now, and I compare what I'm facing right now to what I've been through already, well, I just don't believe, you can't make me believe that God has brought me this for just to leave me. When the word of God began to say that God would never leave us, neither will God forsake us, that assures me, that put my mind at ease, that God will not leave me. He brought me out all right. A songwriter wrote a song in Tyler, I Don't Feel No Way Tired. And some of the words in the song begin to say that nobody told me that my road would be easy. What road? He was talking about my life, my Christian journey. It may not be easy, but the songwriter went on to say, I come too far from where I started from, and I just don't believe God brought me this far just to leave me. Can I get a witness? You see, I don't know what you've been through. And I don't know what you're going through right now. But whatever he brought you out, you ought to be able to give God the praise this morning and give God the glory. Maybe you had a suicide spirit. Wanted to kill yourself. Or maybe he brought you out of a bad marriage because she was physically and mentally abused. Maybe you had a drug addiction, wasn't using marijuana, cocaine, but prescription drugs you was abusing. Maybe you was homeless, nowhere to live. Family members wouldn't take you in to live with them. Maybe you lost the loved ones through death, and you thought that no one else loved you besides the family members that had died. Or maybe you lost your job, couldn't receive unemployment, no money. Well, look back over your life and see how far God has brought you. And if he brought you through that, God can bring you through the this stage that you're presently going through right now. I'm going to be talking about the book of Esther, chapter 1 through chapter 7. And this story begins in Esther, chapter 1. It began to say that the king threw a banquet. And the king sent for Visa, his queen. He wanted to show her off 
and she refused to come. And this angered the king because he was made ashamed in front of his guests and his servant. Well, in Esther 117, the king steward, his servant and his enos began to discuss with him that the queen behavior will begin the queen in Esther 117 for the queen behavior will become known amongst all the women and they will begin to despise their husbands. And then the king became angry with this one. And the king says, I will dethrone her. So in Esther 119, a decree went out. And the decree went out to say that Queen Vissa shall come no more before the king and let her royal position be given to someone else. Well, at that time, we're moving on to Esther 2 and 7. And the decree went out and all the virgins and the young girls began to come and be groomed for the position. And in that grooming, there was a lady young girl named Esther. Esther was the cousin of Mordecai. She was lovely and she was beautiful, but Esther had no family, no other than Mordecai. Her mother and her father had died. And as Esther began to go into the grooming stage of being ready to go before the king. Well, Esther stayed in the grooming stage for 12 months. And periodically Malachi would come and check on her and see how she was doing. Well, Malachi advised Esther not to tell that she was a Jew. And then, but in Esther 2 and 12, it says each young woman turned, came to go before King Azero after she had completed her 12 months of preparation. And it says in Esther 2, 17, but the king loved it, Esther more than all the other women's. And it says that she found grace and favor in the sight more than all the virgin. So the king placed a royal crown upon Esther's head instead of this one. But see, Esther did not know that the enemy was plotting against her. She knew what she had been through, but Esther was unsure of what she would be facing. Well, Monica, her cousin, discovered the plot. See, we don't know what the enemy is plotting us against us, but God knows. In Esther, the third chapter, the sixth verse, and but he attained to lay hands on Monica, for they had told him of the people of Monica. Instead, Haman. Haman was the one that wanted to destroy not only Monica, but all the descendants of the Jews. And Monica sent word in Esther 4.13 to Esther. And he began to tell Esther, don't think for a moment that you are in the palace because of no reason. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape all the other Jews that are killed. Esther 414 and Monica began to say, if you keep quiet, Esther, like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews would arise from some other place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows? If perhaps you was made queen for just a time like this. Well, in 
Esther's mind, she began to think. And she began to think about all that she had been through and how she was without family, lost a mom and lost a dad, just had a cousin. And she began to think of what she needed to do to save her people. Well, in Esther 415, Esther sent Mordecai a word. And Esther began to tell Mordecai that she was going to go on a fast. And she wanted all the Jews to fast along with her, including him. And Esther said, well, on the third day, I'm going to go before the king. And if I perish, let me perish but I'm going to save my people. And Esther 5 and 1, the Bible said on the third day of the fast, Esther put on her royal robe and entered into the inner court of the palace, just across the king's hall. And it says the king was sitting on the throne. Look at God. Look just what God is finna do. Well, if the king did not order you to come, and if you came and the king did not put out his scepter for you to come forth, you could be killed. Well, it says that in Esther 5 and 2, that when the king, he saw Esther standing in the inner court, he welcomed her and held out his scepter to her. So Esther approached and touched the end of the scepter. Look at God move. Then the king asked, what do you want, Queen Esther? What is your request? I will give it to you even a half of the kingdom. And Esther began to talk to the king and she said, if I please you, O king, let you and Haman come today to a banquet that I have prepared for you, king. And then in other words, she says, I'm going to give you what I desire. Now Esther went to the banquet. Haman had already built where in his mind where he was going to kill Mordecai and all the Jews. Well, at the banquet, the king once again asked Esther, what can I give to you? And Esther being the humble woman that she was, she began to tell him, please spare me and my people. I am a Jew and my people and myself is going to be killed. Well, the king rose anger up in him. He began to want to know who plotted this. And she began to say, Haman. Haman, the same gallop that he built for Mordecai, Haman was put on the gallop and he was hanged. And I know Esther looked back and said, I know that God did not brought me through all of that for me to die after becoming queen. You see, God put Queen Esther in place for such a time to save her people. I just don't believe God brought you and I to the place we are right now to abandon us and leave us. God got a purpose and God got a plan. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, greater is you that is in us than he that is in the world. God continue to cover us Continue to make provision for us and make ways for us. God, you done brought us through so many things. We done crossed so many mountains, so many rivers of trouble. We done been through so many storms, so many heartaches. But God, you saw us through every one of them. And God, we thank you in advance for bringing us over. We don't believe that you brought us this far just to leave us. Amen. Amen. Amen.